Welcome to the Beaujolais tasting. We're really fortunate for this tasting. We have brought in a ringer. We have my friend Sam from uh, the winery up the road, Eagle Mountain. He is the key wine maker. He knows, taught me all these great things. I'm so glad you, and you know Beaujolais much better than I do. I know a little bit about Beaujolais. Hopefully I can add some to the conversation. So it, it's one of the wines that converted me into a red wine drinker. It was a great introductory wine for me. Um, and it's a passion that I love to share with people. So I know some about it. If I misspeak or uh, I offer a wrong fact, I apologize, but well, I, I, I love Beaujolais. I don't think that's gonna happen, folks. Anyway, uh, we'll get to our introductory piece here. All right, now getting ready for this sensing, as you recall, the end of the last sensing, we said you may want to read up on Gamay. That's the grape that Beaujolais is made with. And this is a really unusual sensing, very hard to put together, because not too many countries have dared to try to compete with France on Beaujolais. No, they have not. Uh, and so it was not easy to find two other continents that had ever made it before. But we found one from Oregon and one from New Zealand. And if you all find any more, uh, please let us know. Just a reminder, the way we are sensing, we're taking one grape from three different regions and we're using the UC Davis 20 point system that's really helping us understand how to use all of our senses to really appreciate wine. And then we're gonna describe each dimension as we go through this sensing. We have this whiteboard here that we're using. If you haven't had a chance to go see the introductory course that goes with this whole curriculum, I highly recommend it. It will take you through a little bit more of the UC Davis system. We also have an extra little session that's just been, uh, been distributed that goes over UC Davis and the wine wheel. So those are just a couple things. And you can find both of those on the web fairly easily. But what we're doing is we're gonna go through using all of our senses, describe each dimension in standard wine terminology, not just score it and really trying to build that up using like the wine wheel. And then you walk out of here, you're gonna know that grape. You're gonna have had it from three different regions. You'll have a skill in assessing and describing the wine attributes. And you're gonna have fun doing this, more and more fun. Always fun to drink wine. It's always fun to drink wine. Um, red wine sensing, generally the colors for red wine go from pink to tawny brick red. For the Beaujolais, I think we're going to be dealing more with the light or purplish red to deep dark red. Yeah. So there's some lighter in color stuff. Um, the Morgon, which I think is the one we're opening with, definitely that deep rich color. And it, it leans a lot more towards those deeper, more extracted ones. So It looks like it because we poured them all here. Uh, and the bouquet, the aroma, which comes from the great bouquet from the winemaker, uh, will probably fall into the realm of more fruity, floral, or spicy, or earthy. I'm not too sure this wine's known very much for herbaceous, vegetative, or, or oaky. Not as much. The majority of what I typically get on it and what I've, I've read of other people getting on it is fruit forward, um, some acid on the back end as far as you can smell a little bit of that acid, a little bit of that bitterness, um, and then definitely sense it on the palate. Um, and then, yeah, lots of fruit, low tannin, um, and it's a, it's a fun one for sure. All right. Easy drinker. And... Um, again, a wine type, when you, when you categorize the different red wines, this one falls into this. He's just talking about the fresh, fruity, lower tannin Beaujolais, mm -hmm. as opposed to where a cab falls is bigger, bigger, and then something like a, a Syrahs or a, a French Rhone. It said, use the burgundy glasses. So we are using the burgundy glasses. I love that call. <laughs> yeah, it's it, the fruit aromas on this and, and even the bouquet and some of the nicer um, examples of this wine, the more graduated to tight nose um, of the burgundy glasses, it's going to show you the full expression of the wine for sure. Cool. Um, and this is uh, light bodies are vibrant, doesn't age very long. Mm. 10 years kind of at the north end from what I understand. So new world versions replace earthiness with polished shiny fruit. Mm. They'll have a smell of flowers, and you'll probably often get a taste of cherries, raspberry, or spice. Yeah, lots of that kind of bright red fruit. The The way that I've been explained uh, in the past, understanding Gamay and New uh, World regions, is New Zealand, which is kind of the one of the better examples you can get outside of France, that it, it mirrors the difference between Pinot Noir and Gamay in France, and the same in New Zealand, where Pinot Noir is going to be a little bit lighter, a little bit cleaner, more of that clean, direct winemaking style they have in New Zealand. 
you're going to get some of that same stuff in your gamay that's from New Zealand where it's a little bit more stripped back, a little cleaner winemaking, um, but still focusing on those fruits, but more in the New Zealand style. Very cool. Uh, now we're going to start with the first one and we're changing the way we're doing the uh, scoring this time just to make it a little more fun. Uh, we're going to go through each wine in the first category and then go through each one in the second category, go through each one in the third category. So I'm going to be quickly here introducing each three pretty quickly. Anyway, the Beaujolais, uh, produced from Granite Hills with borderline continental climate, meaning not, not maritime, they may get a little bit more winter, mm. a little bit more real summer. Yep. The diurnal shifts day to night too. I think they, they experience some good heat during the day and cool off a little more during the night, so. We've got a thin skin and low tannin grape, has fresh intensity, but lovely sappy strawberry fruit. No Absolutely. barrel aging, but carbonic maceration. Mm -hmm. You wanna explain what that puppy is? So carbonic maceration is a really interesting technique you see in people that are trying to turn over wine quickly. So um, a little backstory on Beaujolais and Gamay in particular as a grape, um, was grown in Burgundy, all throughout Burgundy, um, particularly after the bubonic plague, which it kind of helped them bounce back from because of carbonic maceration and the quick wine making style typically used in Gamay production. Um, they had a mean old uh, Duke of Lyon who outlawed it, um, or a Duke of uh, um, the Burgundy area who outlawed it. So that's why it got pushed down to um, the Beaujolais area and then they used it as a way to um, turn over the wines quickly to become a productive area because they weren't as well known as Mekong, um, some of the other well-known areas that border uh, Beaujolais in Burgundy. So carbonic maceration, um, they pick whole cluster. Um, so a lot of the harvesting techniques um, in Beaujolais are by hand and that's not from necessity of, uh, of the terroir, the terrain being really steep or anything. It's to keep those whole clusters um, unbroken. So they wanna harvest very delicately. They wanna put it all into a big stainless steel tank um, and then they seal that tank. So when they begin the fermentation, they seal the tank. The CO2 that is a byproduct of the fermentation begins to collect at the top of the tank. Um, and then that CO2 and the pressure that builds in that tank allows the fermentation to actually take place inside of the berry as opposed to um, in the juice or the must of the berries that have been crushed. Um, so it's a little bit different than a typical uh, fermentation in an open top vat. Um, in Morgon in particular, from what I understand, they still seal, they still do maybe a partial carbonic maceration, but they do some of their stuff in wood as opposed to stainless steel, large wood um, tanks and do and do carbonic that way. So, so they don't pump CO2 into it, they use a natural CO2? So they'll do natural CO2 in some, from what I understand, Nouveau in particular will have CO2 pumped in oh. and when they put the grapes in, the lower stuff, like the lower fourth or the lower third of the grapes put in the tank will be squished by the gravity of all the grapes. Um, and then they'll pump some CO2 into the top of the tank to begin the pressure um, oh. before they fully enact the the fermentation so it's very unusual this is the only wine i know of that uses that process yeah for sure i i've not had any examples of any other wine um there is some cremant method um wines that actually come out of burgundy that do have some pinot noir in them that they use a partial carbonic maceration mm -hmm. um and i'm not a winemaking expert as mm -hmm. far as how they do all that but um there are Cremant de Bourgogne's that are made with some carbonic maceration with the Gamay grape and the Pinot Noir grape mixed together as a, as a, Sparkling, so. a mixed, so, yeah. Very good. Uh, and the unusual thing when I was learning blind tasting is it's got a nose, a banana, and the one we were taught was bubble gum. Yeah, it, the weirdest, and it, when we get to the palate, we can talk more about it, but there's so many interesting sense elements that come into this wine, which I think is a great reason to call it sensing, um, is that those off-putting fruit notes, and they're not off-putting in a bad way, it's, it, it's, it piques your interest. It's like, oh, that's very different. Um, and you get a lot of that on the nose, it really jumps out at you. You do get that banana, that bubble gum, that almost kind of sweet tart, um, thing that's jumping out in the in the nose um, and then your palate typically backs a lot of that stuff up so wow. 
makes it complex. Yeah, it is for sure. And I mean, you can make world-class wine out of it, which is one of the things we all drink Beaujolais Nouveau when it comes out for the right. most part. And um, that being a very quick kind of cheap and dirty style of making wine, you don't necessarily take it to the nth degree, which is more going some of the finer villages, the crew level Beaujolais that's, um, it's really good stuff, so. All right. Um, intense fruit flavor, which can be structured and complex. Food pairing, charcuterie, white rinded cheeses. Hmm. We got Great. a white rinded cheese Love here, it. folks. White meats, mushroom dishes, and creamy risottos. Hmm. So we're gonna go out of here, and we're just gonna start the first sense with this one, and then uh, we're gonna go on to the next one. We're not gonna go all through this one. The other thing is, um, we tried to make this a little closer for you to see this time, because I know it's been hard every time, but don't worry, at the end, we're gonna throw everything we write on an Excel spreadsheet, put it up for you to see. So if you can't follow everything we're seeing, you'll hear us at any rate. Oh, and we've got the, the beret on today, <laughs> because we're going to go French. No, with a British accent. No, de <laughs> Maison de la Wellon, de Gustation Francais. There, that's it. Uh, so at any rate, we are gonna go through sight, with this wine and go right on to the next one the next one so we'll be much closer comparing each region i think mm. that'll be a lot of fun doing a little different way so the first step is what do you think of this color what are the words that you would describe this as it's kind of a deep ruby almost like a, a purpley note um fades that. towards the rim but not really because of any aging it's just not a, a super extracted wine even though the color is deep um in that purpley red range. Um, looks to be pretty clear. Um, and yeah, I mean, I like the, the kind of purpley red call. Um, uh, the other thing to notice, this is the youngest of all three. And I've also noted the alcohol levels. Hmm. It's the strongest. I was about to say, definitely the boozy end of Beaujolais. <laughs> it's, uh, a lot of their stuff tends to float more in that, that 12, 5 to 13 range from what I understand. So this will be a, a fun, more um, elevated expression of Gamay from the, from the Beaujolais region. But it's sure. really, I, mean, you can, I know we're going to be doing these all together. You can really see the differences. It's mm. much more purple than the others. So um, we're going to go on and introduce the second one. I'll put up the chart for that. And we'll stop and look at it in the glass. Okay, um, again, it's hard for me to find a lot of information on these because there is not that much uh, gamay made in Oregon, even gamay made in New Zealand yet. Uh, sunny days, cool nights, some use carbonic maceration, Syrah-like color, acidic with vivid cherry fruit, pepper and freshness, food pairing, Again, we hear charcuterie, roasted chicken, and I'll take us out of this and then ask what you think of the color of this one compared to number one. I would say a somewhat similar color, not anywhere near as much of the purple note here, much more on that ruby red, um, kind of true red color. Not as much rim variation on this one, even though there is, it's a little bit watery, um, probably due to the the little bit of age that this has on it, the three years. This is uh, so. less, more transparent. Yeah, I would say so. Definitely a, a, a less extracted expression, I would say. More trans. The other thing I do in this one, in this category that not too many people ask you to do, is mm -hmm. see how it moves in the glass, number one and number two. What's it going to tell you about the body of the wines? Yeah, you can definitely tell that this one is a little more kind of fluid, slippery in the glass. This this hangs around. I mean, this has some viscosity to it. The the tears are slower. Um, you can tell that that the the alcohol is upping the surface tension of this wine for sure. So I put that in parentheses because it is what we think. Then we'll see what it ends up being like in the mouth. <laughs> you would think it would follow. Okay, then we're gonna. Oh, I, I forgot my mistake to show you all the number one bottle from France. It's a Morgan. Uh, it's, as we said, 2018, and it's an authentic Beaujolais. What we just we're looking at is called Martin Woods 
in the, in the new world, they're calling it a gamay noir because you can't call it Beaujolais. Yep. It isn't from Beaujolais. Lots of people get in trouble with that, uh, calling champagne, not champagne. Can't do that. And now we will go with a few notes on New Zealand. We've got a puppy dog here. Hmm. Uh, 2009, and it's crazy for me, it must have been the only year I could get. Uh, some of them they do 50% carbonic maceration, 50% red wine fermentation. Hmm. In the glass, I think it's cherry red with a purple tinge. Uh, I might debate that but considering the age of this one. The nose, cherry, bon bon, raspberry, strawberry, toffee, apple. French oak can produce soft tannins. Long finish, aniseed and baking, yada yada, depth, and spicy cuisine is what they call it. Yeah, it's it, interesting. Some of these examples I could see definitely going with some more spicy cuisine, edging into that kind of Syrah and Thai curry end of things. Um, I've had it with uh, Thanksgiving before and absolutely loved it. Probably one of my favorite pairings for Beaujolais would be a, a good Thanksgiving wine, oh, yeah. a fun Thanksgiving wine. It's not too heavy when you're eating a ton of heavy food, but it goes well. That's why that Nouveau Beaujolais holiday, yeah. that marketing gimmick, yeah. whatever you want to call it. And then we've done a bunch of charcuterie with Beaujolais, so any of those kind of fun cheeses. And, and, and here is and things. the New Zealand bottle. This is called Timata, T-E-M-A-T-A, -A, a state Gamay Noir. Uh, and they've all got amazing descriptions on the back of, of how wonderful they are. Hmm. Some wanted to do it and some don't. I was busy reading those earlier. So what do you think of color? The uh, color on this one is, is very different um, from the first two. A lot more kind of brick dusty red, burnt yep. orange red. Um, the age showing. Oh yeah, definitely getting the rim variation. Um, almost going to kind of a, a weird light pink into a really watery meniscus around the rim. Um, showing that, what did you say, 2009? Yes. Showing those years a little bit and still smells fresh. I mean, it smells good on the nose. You can, I mean, you can smell a bit of age, but okay. no, we're not to nose yet. No, we're going to do nose now. Uh, we'll start with number one, the Beaujolais, and we're going to see what it's like in the nose. It's kind of subtle. It is. The red fruit's not popping as much on this, and I think some of that might be due to Elevage. Um, I'm yep. assuming there's a little bit of oak on here, kind of getting a bit of that that oakiness. Um, a lot of the Beaujolais oak use, from what I understand, is new French oaks, barrique, so small barrel. Um, so getting a little bit of that, some of maybe that bacon spice, a little cinnamon. You getting a little cinnamon? Yeah, I mean, it's not overpowering or anything. No. I tell you, the main thing I'm getting, honestly, is the booze. I mean, you can smell that this is 14.5. There's, you can smell the heat. It's kind of burning the the nostrils just a little bit. I mean, in a fun way, in a good way. But um, you can uh, you can smell the warmth of the alcohol in this for sure. Yes, it's 14.5. Okay. Now number two, mm. and I uh, opened these earlier to make sure we didn't have a bad bottle. And this one really interested me. So getting, a, I was getting a little, a little wood on the end. Yeah, I can see that for sure. This one seems to have a little bit more of that fruit character jumping up to me. Little, it's like pale cherry. Something. Yeah, it's it seems not super vibrant fruit. Um, more of that dull like. I wouldn't go into baked or candied because it's, it's not that sweet, but it's the kind of reserved nature of that. From what I understand, Oregon outside of France and outside of Beaujolais in particular is they're doing the best and the most true to form, true to terroir job of producing um, of Gamay. So I'm excited you got one. This is going to be a treat. All right, so then we're going to do the nose on New Zealand, the oldest. Mm. Oh, it's kind of diluted. Yeah, you're starting to get some of that tertiary note. Like I'm, I'm getting a little bit of that carbonic stuff, like a little bit of that banana-y stuff, but it's all of that is kind of dropped back and getting some of that 
tartness or acidity on the nose plus the the little bit of alcohol just because other things have fallen away that's going to be really interesting to taste that's on the nose of the three that's the one i'm the most intrigued about how it's going to play on the palate now what i like to do after these two hmm. is guess what it's going to be like in the mouth so Oof. number one is it going to be long lasting? Is it going to cover your whole tongue? Is it going to be big in the mouth? Yeah. I, if I was going to go with the first one in particular, I'm going to say longer finish. I think it's going to have a little bit of that bitter finish that, that Beaujolais in particular is kind of known for there because they do tend to be a little higher in acidity and don't have other things that balance it out as much, even though that's kind of the fun play thing that comes along with Beaujolais. Um, I think we'll get a little bit of that. So kind of acid or tart on the finish heavier in the mouth. I think the alcohol is going to provide a lot of weight. Um, so maybe kind of a larger body. I think it'll be dry. I don't think there'll be much RS if any on this flavor. I think we'll, we'll probably stick with those red fruits. For we'll my see guess. if he's right. And you guys see if he's right. Okay. You're tasting with us, right? In sensing. Hopefully you're tasting with us. Mm -hmm. So tart. Yeah, not quite as tart as I would have expected. I get some of it again on the on the finish. Sure. I could taste the alcohol for sure. It's got oh, a yeah. it's got a warm kind of uh, almost liquory um, mm -hmm. taste coming down the throat, but I still get the fruit. I mean, it's there for sure. I don't get as much of the of the funky stuff that I expect with Beaujolais, the crunchiness on the palate, kind of that almost bubbly carbonic thing. Um, the length of it in the mouth was kind of short. Yeah, shorter. Um, I mean, I kind of expect short from Gamay most of the time. Um, the only thing that I think was long on this was alcohol and a little bit of that acidity. But I think they've done a good job managing the length of the acidity and keeping it in balance with, with most of the rest of the wine. And what, it's very dry. Yeah. What fruit are you getting with this puppy? I think it's a little more on kind of the tart cherry and maybe some strawberry. Um, maybe red currant. I'm not as familiar with that flavor on the palate, but it, I like it in conjunction with the other two. Um, so yeah, I would definitely lean more towards that cherry kind of fruity ring pop kind of flavor. Very dry. Yep. I right. would definitely say dry. What? And there's no tannin. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, medium minus to low on the tannin presence. The other thing, when I do the overall, do you think the nose is balanced with the mouth? Meaning nothing, not one of those is overpowering. They both you seem to be talking about were pronounced with alcohol. Yeah. The bouquet and in the mouth. For sure, and it, I think if anything, the mouth carries a, it punches a little overweight um, for the nose and, and what I see in the glass. So I would say if anything stands out, it would be, it would be the palate for me um, or the taste. So, um, but okay. I, I wouldn't say it's bad out of balance. I, I, I particularly enjoy it, but again, I'm kind of a Beaujolais nerd, so. Do you see the, the legs on that puppy still? Yeah. Okay, now on to, Oregon, before you move ahead, hmm. when you are oh, looking guess. at it and you're picking up the nose, what do you think it's going to be like in the mouth? I think this is going to be, and this is kind of a stereotypical guess as we move into the new world, but it, I think it's going to be cleaner. I think it's going to be a little more fruit driven, a little less acidic. Um, so a little less of that length of bitterness on the end. Knowing the alcohol beforehand, I think it's going to be, we're going to taste that lower alcohol from the the sight, kind of the viscosity I see in the nose, I think it's going to be a lot lighter in body because that alcohol is, is reduced. Are we going to get any wood through with the mouth? We Which might get some on the end. I wouldn't say a bunch. I mean, it's... I, thought I've, I got a little up here in the yeah. nose. And I thought in the bouquet, I almost got toast. Yeah. I'm a big toast nut. Yeah. So, toast! Yeah. We got toast. And the, on the, and the end of faint. Mm. 
very delicate. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, I, I agree with with both of our call on the on the booze being reduced for sure. It's a it does not have the same weight. It kind of dances around in the mouth. It's a this is a beautiful beautiful one. This is the definition of a sipper for me. Like sit around, don't necessarily have to have food, watch TV and drink <laughs> this, this is wine. Your cup tone. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm gonna try it with. I get about the same amount of tannin, I think, with this. I don't think it's, I think it's probably medium minus on the tannin, um, edging up on low, but I think there is enough acidity here that you get, you get a little bit of that dried out mouthfeel. But I get, I get it here. I get some acid and get a little, a little watering on the cheeks, so. It's funny, with a lot of the, the French when we come to the new world that we've been sensing, we normally get something here that is more elegant, mm. tart. Yep. And this one now seems more elegant, you know, lighter, and smoother, silkier. I guess yeah. silkier is what I was looking for than number one was. I agree. And I think that alludes to kind of what I mentioned earlier about it. Oregon is chasing them and they are, they're not far behind as far as quality of production um, of the Gamay grape and, and the product that they're putting out. So, um, yeah, I mean, of the two, I think I put this above the Morgan and I'm, I'm typically a, a Beaujolais nut and a, wow. a Morgan nut. So. Whoa, alert the media. Yep, this is this is good stuff for sure. There's record breaking going on here. Mm. Yeah, big fan of this one. And I'm such a big nut about when I find toast in the nose. Ah, oh, toast, oh, toast. Mm. Um, okay, now what do you think about the balance between the nose and the mouth on this one? More balanced out for sure. I think it is... Um, I think everything's in balance. I think it is well put together from the ground up. Um, yeah, I would agree with that for sure. On to number three. Now, what do you think it's going to be like in the mouth? I, this one for me, I think a lot of the primary stuff may have dropped away on the palate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call that we're gonna get some of that tertiary, the banana, the, the tartness of the acidity. Still going to get a little bit of the alcohol, so I think it'll have some warmth to it and, and a little bit of weight, maybe more than the one previous. But I think a lot of that fruit may have aged, and it'll be kind of that uh, that older fruit, that slightly overripe fruit. Um, that's cool. That's fun. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, it's a little more present than I guess I thought. The fruit is still hanging. Um, like I said, I think that most people, Gamay is about a 10-year ager um, for well-produced stuff. So for this to be kind of at the the end of that, I think it's hanging on to a lot of its fruit. And, um, what fruit would you call it? I would get more into the strawberry, um, raspberry, that end of things. Not quite as tart, not quite as sharp more more fun and i wouldn't say round because it's not it's not flabby or big in any way but um maybe a little sweeter a little less dry there might be a little rs on this what fruit did you get on the last one mm. I, didn't. I was going to say a similar thing on the last one, much more of the strawberry, okay. um, raspberry end of things. I don't get as much of the tart cherry. It was much more fun on the palate, much easier on the palate, so not as much of that tartness, kind of like this um, New Zealand one, so. And on this one, how balanced do you think it is between the mouth and the nose? I would say balanced, but I would say if it tipped any way, it, it tips towards the nose because of the age. There's something on the nose for me that is interesting enough to where I would remember the smell more than I would remember the taste of this wine looking back on it in a year. <coughs> Excuse me. Nose is bigger. Okay. Mm. Now the only thing we have to go back on um, with UC Davis, when you take, well, number one, you don't get 20 points unless you're the best one in the world. Yeah. And I can't afford it. 
So it's not in this category. Yeah. Um, the other thing is when you downgrade it, it's usually like by 0.5 mm. of something. Okay. Know, hey, it's a little better than 0.5 mm. because the most uh, and you can get is 20 and they probably won't get 20. So mm. what I'd like to just, it just, if you're talking about the first one, if there was anything that you didn't think was perfect about it, what would that be? For me, I would say the alcohol being this high, I think it's a little out of balance. I think it is, and, it, and again, this is very me centric in my, my uh, evaluation of this, but it, it doesn't seem in character for Beaujolais as much. It's typically a lighter alcohol wine and easier yeah. drinking wine. So I was very surprised when I looked that up today. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I, that yeah. just seemed extremely out of whack for many wines. Yeah. I mean, it's, unless you are in Paso Robles in California and you yeah. can get that level of ripeness, get those bricks up and, and be able to vinify to that level. I mean, it's, that's a tall ask for Beaujolais, I think. Um, and I mean, I don't, I don't think it's got any chapitalization. Like I don't think they're adding sugar back to, to bump up fermentation and get more alcohol, but it's, um, it's boozy for what I would expect. It's very sure. pretty. Oh yeah. I mean, beautiful in the glass. Oh yeah. It's, it's younger fruit, you know, yeah. in there and you don't need tinges cause it is so young. Mm. And I don't know. I mean, maybe it is so fun, so. if you lay this down for six, eight years, um, and things begin to develop and it, kind of amalgamates in the bottle it, it could be interesting with that level of booze uh, but yeah i agree with it being this young alcohol is a little high i think um what do you think uh, are some of the drawbacks in number two for me that one didn't have as many drawbacks um i, I would really say like this one thing going on. yeah i agree um there's something interesting in the way that they did whatever version of age they did on this, whether it's stainless with some oak, mm. old oak. I couldn't find anything on the bottle that blend, mentioned so. any wood. Yeah, if I was a bet, I was man, getting it in the nose. It's probably 50 50 stainless and some, some mm. new wood or some two year old wood. Um, because I get what you're saying, like I get some of that toast, but it's it's not it's very, very subtle. Yeah, it's not as much as I, I get on this. I feel like it would if there was such a thing. Isn't that an oxymoron? <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a hammer you hit things with, so it's a delicate hammer. But it's balanced, so you get it. You get yeah. Extra plus there. Yeah, I would say the way it, to go off of that, the way that this all works together, the fruit, the the lack of tannin, the higher acidity how it all comes together in the bottle, I think is a, is a big and pro for this one. 17, so it could, it could be very good for a while. Mm, absolutely. And then the issue we had, I guess, with number three is basically it's age. Yeah, and I, I just don't, I don't know that this wine in its typical presentation with its style of fruit is a wine that I would typically see aged 2009 um, and have that number of years between here and there. Um, so what, what did you guys think? Did you come up with the same kind of analysis? And to uh, so this one, we would just say we you know we we're, were getting in everything some declaration of I'm I've had better years. Yeah. I was surprised at each of them that the body was so short. Yeah, it is. It is not a cabernet. It will not yeah, hang with you for a while, and or is in and. If I do time, and also part of the mouth that it covers, mm. and and I didn't, I really didn't get a lot of it neither. Yeah, but I'm still. So number two is your favorite. Mm. I would say so for sure. Um, so two you know? closely followed by the Morgan. I mean, I I can't uh, can't neglect my my favorites. Um, yeah, and then I'd. I think that's okay. Good. So we get I agree with those Oregon 19. We get Beaujolais because he's got flags, citizenship papers, passport, everything for no, no, I wish, case. I wish for 18.5. <laughs> and we ended up with New Zealand at 18. And um, hang on, everybody, because we're going to take all this, throw it into Excel spreadsheet, and I'll stop and just go over the results again for you. Then, as soon as we do that, so uh. Anyway, before I take off, I definitely want to thank Sam. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. And I, I know I'm here with Dirty Fingernails from the Vineyard. And this, the this guy taught me how to trellis. He taught me how to plant rootstock. 
No. He does this all day long. This guy knows just, what he's talking about. It's a fun right? job. And we, we cherish having people like you around to help us uh, caretake for the vines and everything. So thanks for what you do for the vineyard. And we're going to put another plug in for the name of the... Eagle Mountain Winery. So we're just up the road in Travelers Rest, South Carolina. So come see us sometime. We'll be open in about two weeks from now. So Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. I really enjoyed uh, doing that sensing with Sam. You could tell he was quite an expert on wine in general, and in particular on Beaujolais. Uh, here are the results that we came up with. Um, a little surprising. Our, one of the key things was the difference in years and the fact that we were sensing horizontally each of the attributes across each wine before we went to the next topic. So that made it a little different, and I think a little more fun. Uh, I think you should try that sometime if you haven't. It really makes it much more of a close comparative analysis. But anyway, we find right off the beginning there was a big difference in alcohol and in years. Uh, with the Beaujolais, uh, overall, we thought that it looked so much bigger in the glass the purple red, it was so young, but it still had a pronounced amount of alcohol, maybe too much, so it seemed to overpower that wine. And it brought it down a little bit in the aroma and a little bit in the mouth. And overall, it wasn't really in balance because the mouth was so much bigger than what we were getting out of the nose. The Oregon probably was a surprise to us. It was extremely, I'll say, delightful. Uh, we got a little bit of wood in the aroma it was a little bit thinner in the body uh, than um, the Beaujolais. Uh, delicate, some fruit in the mouth. All of these we thought were kind of a uh, short finish in the mouth, but it was pretty well balanced. So that was actually our favorite of the three. The last, and I was kind of surprised from New Zealand when I went out to get one that it was a 2009 uh, that was on the market. But it definitely had the brick color of an aged wine uh, much more of the delayed reaction in the nose of the carbonic maceration. And that's where they pump the CO2 or there's already natural CO2 in uh, the wine. Uh, and overall, the age just seemed to give you the feeling it was, it was over being delightful. And the nose was bigger than the mouth. So anyway, I don't know what you all came up with. But that's kind of what we did. And, and wasn't it really great having someone who's kind of an expert in the wine uh, step up and help us out? 